Hi, I'm Jen, and welcome to Christian Fire Poppy. Now, remember last general conference when I had a video called Prophetic Warning? And then we talked about how we were going to keep an eye on October 7th, and then Israel was attacked that day. Well, I feel like I'm having deja vu, and I'm seeing some interesting patterns and coincidences that are showing up in this general conference and signs in the heaven and in the earth, linking to our upcoming April 21st. And I will get to that, but first I want to lead in by sharing this very interesting story that to me feels like it supports the message that our prophet gave us. And this event happened on that same day. So there was this very interesting series of coincidences in the news. And what first caught my attention was that there were three men stranded on a deserted island and they spelled the word help with palm leaves. You can see it down here on the left. So when I saw this, it immediately reminded me of President Nelson's talk because all year long, I have been talking incessantly about Passover, Pentecost, the Kirtland Temple, and Palm Sunday, and these events that happened in 2020 and now in 2024 with us getting the Kirtland Temple. So the word Hosanna, this is a Palm Sunday shout, means save, please. This is also when you dedicate a temple. So when the Kirtland Temple was opened, they cried Hosanna. It was a Palm Sunday shout, meaning save us, please. So this is an image that reminds me of a Palm Sunday shout. And the interesting thing, look at this headline. It says Pacific Castaways Help Sign Sparks U.S. Rescue Mission and an Unexpected Family Reunion. So lots of interesting coincidences. Not only that, but... <laughs> Within four years, there were two amazing saving incidences where people were stranded on this exact same island just four years apart in 2020 and in 2024. And the exact dates that these happened seem very coincidental. So let's take a look at the story first, and then we'll come back and examine the interesting timing coincidences. So... Let me show you. Okay, so this is a CNN article that just came out on April 11th, 2024. Pacific Castaways Help Sign Sparks U.S. Rescue Mission and an Unexpected Family Reunion. So there are three mariners who spell out the word help using palm fronds. And they had been planning to go fishing, but they scrambled ashore onto an uninhabited pike lot after an accident when their skiff was caught by swells. Their radio ran out of power before they could call for help. So they put up the sign and waited. For a week, the men lived off coconut meat. They had fresh water, but that was it. The search for these men began on April 6th. So April 6th, that we know that is Christ's birthday and most likely uh, the original Passover day when he was born. So when one of their relatives called rescue officials in the Pacific territory of Guam, saying they had not returned to Palawat Atoll, an island more than 100 miles away, were they three, they had started their voyage on Easter Sunday. So I find this timing interesting that they started their voyage on Easter Sunday. The search began on April 6th. This is Christ's birthday. This is when General Conference started. And then on October 7th, this help sign was spotted. Well, it says this act of ingenuity was pivotal in guiding rescue efforts directly to their location. 
So the Navy dropped survival packs to the three men and relayed their location to others. A day later, the Coast Guard came to rescue the men. One of the first rescuers on the beach was Petty, Petty Officer 2nd Class Eugene Halish Leas. The stranded men were surprised to see that Halish Leas was Micronesian and spoke the local language. Now imagine how much more surprised they were to find out that they were his cousin. So one of them was a third cousin and the others fourth cousins. Amazingly, this was not the first rescue of castaways from Pike Lot. So not only were the people rescuing them their relatives, but this was the second rescue within four years. So in 2020, there were three other men traveling between these Micronesian atolls and found themselves washed up after their boat ran afuel on this exact same island. And those three spelled out SOS on the beach. How does this happen on the same island twice in four years? Well, it could be a coincidence, said Chief Warrant Officer Soar Muir, but as Elder Bender says in his book, there are no coincidences. So let's take a look at some of the interesting timing coincidences that are tied to this. So I feel like this story just really, if you think about it, the deeper message, it highlights the deep message of President Nelson and his talk having to do with covenants saving us and the great gift that the Kirtland Temple represents that we were given on Palm Sunday, just four years after the 2020 Hosanna shout that we did and all of the interesting timing that had to do with that. So let's take a look at the days and timing for this first SOS beach incident. So these three, they left on Tishbia. This is Abomination of Desolation Day in 2020. So July 29th, 2020, this was the same day the voice of warning came out of the Salt Lake Temple time capsule. And you can see here that it was on July 29th that they headed out and became stranded. And now this Palm Sunday, not Palm Sunday, but Palm Help sign was three men who left on Easter Day. The search began. Sorry, speaking of help, my son needed something. Um, but if you look at the timing for this event, they left on Easter Day. The search began on April 6th, and the help made of palm fronds was found on April 7th, 2024, so the same day as the Prophet's Kirtland Temple message. And the reason I tie this in is because 2020 and then 2024, these were the big Palm Sunday Hosanna shout. So the worldwide Palm Sunday Hosanna shout was in 2020, this general conference. And in 2024, you had the Kirtland Temple opening exactly four Palm Sundays from 2020 general conference and exactly four years to the temple day closures announced. So we had the big closure of the temples and then the big temple opening, regaining the Kirtland Temple, which to me is a miracle and a symbol of things to come. And the timing highlights the themes of Palm Sunday, Passover, and Pentecost. Because the blessings of the Kirtland Temple are all about promised Pentecostal blessings, the continuation of such events. So for looking at the Passover theme, there are so many things pointing to April 21st that I will just say right away, I am not saying anything is going to happen. I do not know what is going to happen on April 21st, but there are a lot of signs pointing to the day and time. And so April 21st is the last day of Nissan 10. This is Passover prep time. Passover goes from April 22nd to April 30th. And I will just be curiously watching to see what happens on April 21st all the way through April 30th. And it feels a little bit like when we were watching for the October 7th and something 
big did happen then. And I have no guarantees as far as what will happen, but we can watch and we can be curious. And so the Pons Brooks eclipse, they call it the Devil Comet, is brightest on April 21st, 2024. And it is at perihelion, closest point to the sun on that day as well. Also on that day is a Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. So a lot of interesting signs in the heaven. An interesting connection that I made is also that pons in Latin means bridge. And we've had three different big bridge events. So one of them being the Francis Scott Key Bridge that was destroyed and a couple others that I talked about in previous videos. But also we have here in the news, it says leaked audio shows Germany discussed possible Taurus missiles delivery to Ukraine. Taurus missiles could destroy Crimean Bridge. So we have this sign in the Taurus constellation, and we have this warning about Taurus missiles destroying another bridge. Interesting. Quick little review. The Pons Brooks Comet becomes brightest and at perihelion at the start of Passover right before on April 21st. And it's kind of interesting because in general conference, I just saw these ties to Elder Stevenson's talk. He said, when you pass over a majestic suspension bridge, so when I hear bridge, I think bridge or ponds, reminds me of the big sign in the sky with the second eclipse that just happened, and the two great commandments. So he's telling us to think. This is what, like, really highlighting this idea, the two great commandments. So may our hearts and minds be lifted upward. So also on this day, the Manti Temple will be dedicated. And it just makes me remember that covenants with Jesus Christ enable curses to pass over us. So even when living in Egypt, we may be protected as individuals and families. So just like Elder Irene talked to us when he talked about the big bri bridge disaster, sorry, not bridge, but dam disaster when the dam burst and it covered all of Rexburg that we find our peace and covenants even when these wild events strike. So the very interesting thing, the reason I think the Ponds Brooks Perihelion Day on April 21st means something is just because of the pattern of what it has done in the past. It cycles around every 70 to 71 years. And when we first discovered it, it was during the 1812 war. And the first perihelion after it was discovered, so remember, there have only been four, including the one that's coming up on April 21st. So September 15th was Francis Scott Key's Star Spangled Banner Original Manuscript Day. So kind of interesting that that was kind of the establishment of the Francis Scott Key Star Spangled Banner, the beginnings of America and now I just feel like there are signs. It's kind of like the eclipses are like bookends or kind of an end to the kingdoms of the world that are ruling. And how fitting that symbolically we would have this destruction of the Francis Scott Key Bridge while the Ponds Brooks is back again in 2024. Mother symbolism here. With the Star Spangled Banner, it was on September 15th, and we have the 15 stars and the 15 stripes at that time. So Elder Stevenson, I feel like he is really talking about these symbols a lot, and I feel like maybe there are some deeper messages to be found within his talk. So Elder Stevenson, he gave this great bridge parable talk, and he said, when you pass over a majestic suspension bridge, I invite you to remember the two great commandments. May our hearts and minds be lifted upward. So he mentioned the Baltimore Bridge is another name for the Francis Scott Key Bridge. The Golden Gate Twin Towers. So when I think of Twin Towers, I think of covenant curses, things happening to the nation that hold up the bridge and the great commandment lesson to the Pharisees to love God and love thy neighbor. So this is part of the Fig Tuesday lesson of Holy Week. I talked about that tie-in, and he said directly, this is a lesson from what we call Holy Week. 
So the first bridge he mentioned and showed a picture of was the Rainbow Bridge. And we had talked about that as being a possible symbolic event on November 22nd, which ties into the whole October 7th theme. So when you pass over a majestic suspension bridge, I invite you to remember the two great commandments. So he says, today, I invite you to look at this stately bridge with its ascending twin towers built on a strong foundation through a gospel lens. In the twilight of Jesus Christ's ministry during what we now call Holy Week, a Pharisee who was a lawyer asked the Savior a question he knew was nearly impossible to answer. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? The lawyer tempting him and seeking a legalistic answer with seemingly deceitful intent received a genuine sacred divine response. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. Hearkening to our bridge analogy, the first tower and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. This is the second tower. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. The remaining elements of the bridge. Let's examine each of the two great commandments revealed and recited in Jesus Christ's response. As we do so, let the image of the magnificent suspension bridge resonate in your mind's eye. And he has this image of the Golden Gate Bridge. So I ran across just something out there on the internet that was kind of weird, and I probably would have completely disregarded it had Elder Stevenson not just talked about the Golden Bridge, the Golden Gate Bridge. Not only did he talk about it, but right before General Conference, I mentioned how my, <laughs> my mind was intrigued by a video that the happy lady had posted about she had visited the Golden Gate Bridge. She had a lot of thoughts about that that stuck out in her mind. So you had her witness and then you had Elder Stevenson talking about it. And so when I thought that when I ran across this, it sounds really strange, but I thought I'd just throw it out here as another weird thing pointing to this date of April 21st. Maybe this is just a bunch of weird coincidences. We're going to have to just watch and wait. It says so many signs pointing to Passover 2024. Another bridge event coming? Well, there was this warning. Gilbert Gottfried, I find it interesting, GG, like the Golden Gate Bridge, he warned on August 11th, 2019, for people to stay off the Golden Gate Bridge. Now, I believe he is a comedian, and so this would not normally be a very reliable source, but it was pointed out that if you plug in April 21st into the Maya calendar converter. This sounds weird, but this is an ancient sacred calendar. You get the date of 11 8 19. That was <laughs> that was the date that he was warning about, which was um, August 11th, 2019. And so that could be completely erroneous and nothing, but I just thought it was weird enough to share. <laughs> so we're going to be more logical about things. Let's just look at what our FBI chief Chris Ray warns. And on April 11th, he is warning of a coordinated attack on U.S. just weeks after Moscow concert hall horror. So the FBI had warned about something happening in Moscow, and it did. There was the concert hall horror. Now they are warning again, and I would definitely take this seriously. So Christopher Ray warned lawmakers Thursday that there is a growing fear among law enforcement officials of a coordinated attack inside the U.S. Weeks after an ISIS assault on a concert hall in Moscow killed 145 people and wounded hundreds more. Our most immediate concern has been that individuals or small groups will draw twisted inspiration from the events in the Middle East to carry out attacks here at home. But now, increasingly concerning is the potential for a coordinated attack here in the homeland akin to the ISIS-K attack we saw at the Russia Concert Hall a couple weeks ago. 
So additionally, Ray emphasized his call for Congress to renew Section 702 of the Foreign National Surveillance Act, which is set to expire on April 19th. Now, this caught my eye because this is the big, this has been extremely controversial. This allows the FBI to spy on people, and a lot of people on the right have accused them of spying on their own people using this as a loophole. So this was something that was pushed through soon after 9-11, and it is creating a lot of controversy because it is expiring soon and they are wanting to renew it. So all these things seem so odd. And then it gets even more odd because on April 11th, when I woke up in the morning, it just caught my eye that I was at exactly 6666 subscribers. And for me, I immediately, it immediately reminds me that the solar eclipses, the bookend solar eclipses are spaced by six years, six months, six weeks, and six days. So this had my attention. And then later when I looked at, when I took this screenshot exactly, if you add seven plus five, that's 12. So six, plus six, another six. So all these, <laughs> these sixes. And we have this theme of the solar eclipse and the devil comet and warnings. So it says the House GOP bridges divide to reauthorize controversial surveillance bill. So when we're talking about this controversial, it says surveillance bill. So the division stem from a debate over how to amend Section 702. The post 9-11 provision gave U.S. spy agencies the ability to surveil only non-citizens abroad who are suspected of threatening national security. So the House GOP, and interesting how they use these word bridges, bridges divide to reauthorize FISA surveillance bill. The divisions stem from a debate over how to amend this section, 702 FISA law. This 9-11 provision gave spy agencies the ability to surveil only non-citizens abroad who are suspected of threatening national security. But at issue is whether spy agencies can analyze communications by Americans who may have interacted with the foreign target, which privacy advocates on the far right and left say is unconstitutional. So it's a very controversial provision and it's about to expire. So again, this bookend message, the first eclipse and the second eclipse with bridges, remember ponds means bridge. So Elder Stevenson is kind of on it with this symbolism where back in 2017 with the first eclipse, he talked about spiritual eclipse and he mentioned how it was President Monson's birthday and his birthday wish was to do something good, to love others. So the second great commandment. Now we have a second talk where he says, it is a classic suspension bridge with book and towers. So bridging the two great commandments. It seems to tie in with the imagery along with the second eclipse with the bridges bombs comet. So it gets even weirder, guys. <laughs> We're just completely going down the rabbit hole today. So one, one, one day is actually the midpoint between the difficult days, prophetic warning. So that general conference day, Sunday, October 1st, when Elder Iring warned us about difficult days ahead. And I put out this video talking about October 7th, and then October 7th was the day that Israel was attacked. And now we have all these signs pointing to April 21st, Passover time. So I'll be watching from April 21st all the way to April 30th, particular interest on April 21st. But like I said, we do not know. I have no idea. I am not saying I know what's going to happen. I don't. I will just be watching it. So if you take this October 1st warning day and you count how many days between it to April 21st, 2024, you get 203 days. And so the exact midpoint day, when you have an odd number of days, the exact day in the middle 
is January 11th. And I had also done a video about this, 111 day. So 111 day is midpoint day. And Jared at Christian Homestead just pointed out, so he has no idea that I was going to post about this topic. And I was surprised to see him posting a video about this coincidence. This is a big coincidence. So it's also highlighted in this general conference, the April 2024 footnotes. And remember, in general conference, for the first ever time, they told us specifically to study the prophet's footnotes. And here in the footnotes, it notes that President Nelson, I filled the vacancy in the Quorum of the Twelve left by the January 11th, 1983 death of Elder Legrand Richards. Elder Oaks filled that which was left by the January 11th, 1984 death of Mark E. Peterson. So one year apart on January 11th. So this highlighting of something that I have been talking about, which is one, one, one day. There just seems to be something of significance and even more now that it's right in the middle of this general conference morning and this April 21st beginning of Passover. So you can see here that from October 1st, when you add 102 days, that's the middle date. So back when I was talking about 111 day, and why it was interesting is because January 11th was the midpoint of all solar eclipses and blood moon tetrads. It's also possibly the true midpoint day of Hanukkah. Long explanation with that. Hebrew New Year, a long explanation with that. But it was also a new moon and biggest eclipse miss of 2024. So it's like the opposite of an eclipse to the max. And then some interesting dates in history um, on January 11th having to do with Joseph Smith's birthday. And you can go back and watch this video if you're interested. Um, but this was very close to when uh, President Nelson was and President Oaks were called to be you know, apostles. So, and remember what happened on that day. This was the day that the U.S. Yemen conflict in the Red Sea began. So again, if we're looking at Passover imagery, the Red Sea is that big Passover miracle. So even just today, three hours ago, this is the news. U.S. forces in Red Sea are having no rest. So there's still a lot of unrest and fighting going on in Yemen. All right. So we have no idea what's going to happen. And based on these connections, we still do not know. So we are not going to jump to any conclusions or assume or go crazy with it. Um, but if you are concerned about any of that, then I invite you to pray about it. And our leaders have told us to pray and to be spiritually tuned and to look for symbolism. And so turn to the spirit. The spirit will tell you what you need to do and what the spirit has told me that I need to do. And then I want to invite each of you to do are those invitations that we were given at general conference. So I have two different challenges. We're going to talk about the Passover challenge and the Pentecost challenge, which we are doing both. Now you can pick and choose or alter this. However, the spirit prompts you, but I put this out to correlate with the challenges given to us at General Conference. So number one, to pray powerful prayers like Elder Holland asked us to do. His talk was amazing. He had a journey. He talked about a journey to the other side of the veil. And he says he needed to come back and warn with urgency and warmth. So I want to follow his lead and do the same and we need to pray, like he said, and repent and to pray for help for America and Israel and really all of the world. There's so much unrest, so much going on. And I added to protect our bridges because we keep having bridges, events. So let's pray for our infrastructure and our safety. And number two, let's praise and worship God. And that's what he talks about as part of the prayer. That is the, as he said, the hidden fire 
and I'm not quoting that correctly, but it was really, really cool. He says that prayer is, oh, you guys have to help me on the comments, a hidden fire, but it's really beautiful. And number three, to do an act of service. And so I'm trying to do an act of service to follow the first and second commandments. And so every day I'm trying to consciously do an extra act of service for someone that I love. And the Pentecost challenge, and this will extend through to Pentecost day, which will be on May 19th. So one, to pray powerful prayers that the blessings of the Kirtland Temple dedication may come to pass. Two, to study Doctrine and Covenants 109 and the Kirtland Temple history. That is what the prophet has asked us to do. And I love that. I have been doing that all year and I will continue to do it. And number three, to gather Israel daily by doing family history, temple work, and missionary work, and any of those things. I try to do at least one of these each day. So I invite you guys to join me as we do this and as we watch. And let's just remember that the building up of Zion is a cause that has interested the people of God in every age. It is a theme upon which prophets, priests, and kings have dwelt with peculiar delight. Join us at Christian Fire Poppy as we explore captivating symbols, celestial signs, and earthly events to help remember gospel concepts. We draw upon compelling future dates for spiritual momentum and motivation and setting goals to build Zion and watch for his coming. Thanks for joining me. Let's bloom despite the doom and gloom like a true fire poppy. A Zion field of many fire poppies will reduce erosion after world chaos fires. Join us for more fiery passion and preparedness as we fly into the second coming of Jesus Christ.